Welcome everyone, Quistine here with a discussion about World of Warcraft Classic and about the possibility of Classic Fresh, which to me right now doesn't seem as much of a possibility as a damn near certainty that they're going to work on it, that they're going to release it. When we have no idea whatsoever, I don't think Blizzard has any idea whatsoever. Even people that have contacts in Blizzard, what those contacts have told them, based on what I know at least, is that they don't know. They also have no bloody clue when Phase 2 is coming out for the Burning Crusade Classic, which is pretty worrying in some ways because Classic is in not in a great position right now. TBC Classic is not in a great position right now. And the more they delay Phase 2, the worse it's going to get, a lot worse it's going to get. And, well, if Blizzard doesn't know, they don't know. Not very encouraging in many ways, I'm afraid. But anyway... We have some news, or rather what some people have been able to find from Wowhead Classic Era PTR Patch 1.14 at Zarektix 12 and Ray Trace Shadows. So, uh, although the Classic Era and Classic Era PTR are on the 1.14 patch, Patch 1.14's data has been leaked on Blizzard CDN during the update to Shadowlands 4.9.1. And looking into the graphics settings, we have DirectX 12 and Ray Trace Shadows. And if we open this, this pretty much is Shadowlands. So what does this mean? It means that Blizzard is updating the classic client to the Shadowlands uh, level. Now, this is important for more reasons than just Ray Tracing and DirectX 12 or other graphical options. Um, it's also, it's mainly, I imagine, really for security purposes, although pretty much no one plays on the Classic Era servers, there's still a security vulnerability for Blizzard to have those servers on the Battle for Azeroth uh, client, because the Shadowlands client also contains security updates. So that makes sense. Indeed, this is the main reason that Blizzard is using a modern client with all the old data, but the modern client for Classic, it is uh, security updates it's also performance reasons and hey a bit better graphics doesn't hurt either right so anyway uh so anyway uh that's one of the reasons they're doing it it's a vulnerability but of course the bigger reason or at least the speculation on that is that they're looking to make classic fresh now one of the things to say now when it comes to classic fresh there are plenty of wish lists that people have many of them veer in well into territory that would be considered classic plus not classic fresh there is a difference with classic fresh be blizzard would just be re-releasing re classic maybe with a few changes some changes but certainly not the sweeping massive ad changes and additions to the game that some people are asking like i was looking at asmongold's wish list yeah some of that stuff is, well, ridiculous. On top of that, do we trust Blizzard or even the community, honestly, for that matter, to have good ideas? Well, with the community, after seeing the community demand Tier 5 being split off from Tier 4 and Blizzard using that to pad out the length of Burn Crusade the Classic with disastrous results, how about no? I don't care how many people say, oh, but I'm having fun. Yeah, the actual data that's out there is showing otherwise. It's showing drop of player activity. It's showing a loss of players, it's showing that Burn Crusade Classic has not grown to anywhere near as much as it should have. Those are facts, regardless of how some people feel about it. And plenty of people have quit uh, as well, including myself, I have completely quit quite a while. But personal feelings aside about that, it has had a negative impact with some changes. I'm also thinking about Warcraft 3 Reforged, for instance, versus Diablo 2 Remastered, Resurrected, or Starcraft 1 Remastered. With, with StarCraft and Diablo, they're not making any real gameplay changes. They made graphical changements, uh, changes, improvements, but not gameplay changes. And so far, yeah, sure, there's problems because they're very dated games in many ways. There's problems with that, absolutely, and can be boring and frustrating because of that. But compare that to the disaster that Reforged was, yeah, I think I'd take StarCraft 1 Remastered and Diablo 2 Resurrected any day of the week over the nightmare of Reforged. I'm not saying the idea of Re something like Warcraft 3 Reforged was bad, far from it. In fact, I would have loved it if Blizzard had actually redesigned the missions properly. They put in an effort that there were some gameplay changes and some better campaigns in it, maybe some better multiplayer. 
what we got was a mess. So at the end of the day, given Blizzard's track record with TBC Classic, with Warcraft 3 Reforged, do, does anyone want to trust that these guys are capable of making massive changes to Classic that some people would want? My money is on no, and it's kind of sad to say it that we don't trust that the only thing we could trust Blizzard at this point is just putting some graphical updates. And they're not even the ones doing that, by the way, with Diablo 2 Resurrected. Another, uh, another company, based on what I know, is doing that. We cannot trust them to do uh, to make any changes even to their older games, let alone them making a new game or new content. That's a fact. That's one major issue with Blizzard. Maybe things will change now that they have different management. Call me extremely skeptical and I still I actually see some results. If anyone has any faith in Blizzard right now, then you haven't been paying attention over the last, I don't know, decade. I'm going to go that far. Yes, decade. It has been that long and that many terrible decisions being taken over the years by this company. So yeah, no trust in Blizzard to make those changes. And even if they wanted to make those changes, they would not have the budget or the manpower to do it because they want a cheap effort. They want to have something that they spend as little money as possible and they want to get a quick win. So for them, it doesn't even make sense to make Classic Plus, which would entail what new content, maybe some balance changes to the classes, uh, maybe the addition of Paladins on the Horde side, Shamans on the line side. Uh, new raids, like some people said Karazhan. We know Karazhan, for instance, or Karazhan Dungeons, uh, or the Karazhan Cellars. Some, uh, we know that Blizzard had wanted to originally include Karazhan in vanilla. They did it in TBC because, while well, they were already working on expansion, they weren't able to quite finish it. But Karazhan was supposed to be, be a vanilla raid or dungeon. I don't quite remember which one it was, but it was supposed to be part of vanilla. vanilla. So there are a lot of possibilities with Classic. And Classic does offer something that no other version of WoW really offers, which is 40-man raiding. Now, 40-man raiding is something that a lot of people say, oh, it doesn't really work, to which I replied, the only two games that have really tried it have been Vanilla and Wildstar. And it has and worked quite damned well in Vanilla. It worked quite well in Classic. It wasn't a problem. Like some people are, oh, it's too difficult for guilds to organize for 40 man rating. This was something a lot of people actually used to say in the prelude to the launch of Classic that would be very difficult. Turns out it wasn't. Really? It really fucking was not. Plain and simple. It was a load of crock shit. But, oh, but Wildstar. Well, Wildstar failed for a lot of reasons, none of which actually really had to do with how the raids actually were. Uh, poor performance, bad class balance, bad design, bugs, glitches, etc. So anyway, with Classic Fresh, what could they realistically do for Classic Fresh? Well, first off, I think they should consider some changes to leveling. By changes, I mean the amount of experience you gain, how long does it take you to level, how much experience you need per level, especially for the last few or past level 20, for instance, maybe even past level 10 and some changes to fix the issues we saw in Classic where people would just go in dungeons because it was by far and away the most efficient way to level. And in terms of XP per hour, in terms of how much experience you gain per mob versus, or a group of mobs versus doing quests in the open world. And then you add mage boosting on top of that or decent group doing these dungeons over and over again. And yeah, things are gonna be very heavily were heavily favored in terms of dungeons and sure dungeons there should be a reason for people to do dungeons i'm not saying that but i think there is some problems when people feel that the best way to level is through killing mobs in dungeons part of the problem with that is people aren't gonna aren't going to do full dungeon runs because what's the fucking point of doing the bosses they take time waste of time and on top of that it just creates the real really bad incentives i mean people should want to do all of brd they should have a reason to or all of scarlet monastery and so on so i would i uh, fix that or uh, and also i would i deal with the mage boost and all that some people have talked about limiting AoE. i don't think that's gonna matter at all i think here's one solution if you are leveling and 
your, let's say, 10 levels outside the person's level range, maybe even more than that, or less than that. Like, let's say if someone is five levels higher than you, then the amount of experience you gain in a dungeon, like if a level 60 is in a dungeon and you're, say, you know, less than 55 or something along those lines, if you're a lower level, the amount of experience you're gaining is very low. By very low, I mean extremely low, so low that you would rather go kill mobs on your own in the open world than do that. That's what I would do. I've significantly lowered the amount of experience people gain in dungeons as long as there's a level 60. And I would, and that's just for having a level 60. It wouldn't be perfect, and the solutions I present should be taken with a grain of salt. They're just my thoughts on this. I'm sure a multi-billion dollar company can come up with a better solution. But this is just an idea. You want to prevent mage boosting? You can ner you can tweak the AoE numbers all the fuck you want. It's not going to matter. What you really want to do is make it so that people should not gain a benefit from grouping up with the 60. Now, that would significantly reduce. Also, fix some of the issues where level 60s in the open world. Hunters especially can use their pets to kill mobs for players, and those players gain the full experience benefit. There are things that can be done and should be done. As for... Uh, discouraging dungeon grinding for experience. Running dungeons, no, for items, requests, all that, that's all good. Running dungeons because killing X number of mobs in, say, armory or cathedral is the most efficient way to level, uh, should be discouraged. I think one of the things that Blizzard should do is make it so bosses, or at least end bosses in the dungeons, give significantly more experience than. Uh, they have when they are killed. That gives people reason to actually do the whole fucking thing. So it should be worth it to do a full dungeon run with all the time it takes to kill Mograin uh, or Herod. It should be worth it for people to do full clears. It should be bosses that are actually hard to reach, like Emperor and BRD uh, and some other bosses it's like that. So people have an incentive to clear the whole thing. Also should be bosses that are hard to reach in general so that people do it. People should be incentivized to do full dungeon runs instead of trying to do, uh, trying to do easy trash packs for easy experience. That's my perspective. On top of that, people should be incentivized to not live in dungeons. On top of all of that, there should be a strong incentive for people to quest. How would you fix that? Well, a lot more experience from quests themselves, like five times, four or five times the amount of experience that quests give. That would help it. Look, the reason it's important to do things like that to make questing more viable is this. Doing an AU grind or a mob grind or a dungeon grind is always going to be more efficient and easier to do for a lot of people. Why easier? Because you get once you get started and you get in the rhythm, you're less stressed out, you're not as exhausted. I can tell you there, this staying there for hours and hours and hours questing is a lot fucking harder mentally, physically, it puts a bigger strain on you than just going into Scarlet Monastery for the 30th fucking time on the same day and doing the dungeon. Also, dungeon limits. Yeah, have those. Have them very strict, actually. Maybe put in very strict dungeon limits for people while leveling so they just can't blast through the dungeons. At 60, it's a different discussion, but while leveling, people should have a strict dungeon limit. However many, 20, 10 a day, doesn't matter, but just something for so that people aren't uh, abusing the crap out of the system. People should want to do dungeon to a reasonable degree, but more than 10, 15 a day is kind of pushing. I mean, consider this, that's already, like 15 is already, what, three hours more of dungeons? That's a lot. That can be a lot. And that's just 15. 30 is a, reason, a very high limit while leveling. Now, at max level, things change, different priorities, etc. Uh, there shouldn't necessarily be a dungeon limit like that at max level. Um, but this brings up another point. Farming, consumables, gold. Uh, increasing spawns around the world. Making so that farming lotuses isn't the fucking pain in the neck. Farming ores isn't a pain in the neck. Dynamic spawns should be added throughout 
World of Warcraft. Just make that experience, make it so people want to go in the open world instead of locking themselves in BRD or Dire Mall. That's what Blizzard should do as a company. And this is, by the way, something that they have actually done to a pretty decent degree with Burning Crusade because of the higher spawns that they've introduced in Burning Crusade. So that's something they should do for a classic as well. That's basically leveling open world. What about raiding? Now, my personal opinion on the subject, re completely remove world buffs, pure and simple. Just fucking remove them, throw them out of the game. Some people are going to say, oh, but it ruins the spirit of classic because you're not ganking people or entering BRD. Okay, some people would be pissed off about any changes. Those people are the kind are a minority and don't really matter in the, in the things. Blizzard should make changes that... It, it, it's not it, Changes should not be made about what's pleasing the crowd. Changes should be made for what's good for the game. That's the first thing I would say on this subject. Another thing I would say on the subject is world buffs need to go. They are a poison on the community and they are highly detrimental to the community and they need to go. It would actually make raiding more interesting and by their very removal, it will lead to different a different playstyle in raids. You wouldn't see necessarily the 30 plus warrior raid spam as you have before because war warriors are the prime beneficiaries of having so many world buffs and consumables. They are the ones uh, benefiting the most. If you remove world buffs, it changes the mentality of raiding. Or I could be completely f wrong on this and people would still stack the crap out of warriors. But, you know, if something, if there's a meta of stacking classes, that's always going to happen in the top guilds and the speed running guilds but it would certainly help things if blizzard removed world buffs it really would because it would mean or chrono boons should be in regardless like it, it, chrono boons should be in if they have world buffs because you want to be able to play your fucking character just just like that you want to be able to log in at your character that was the issue chrono boon solved uh, that with the way world buffs were working, you would just get them, then you can play your main character, the one you've invested so much time in gear. It's like, yeah, you want to play the character you've invested so much time and effort in? Tough luck. You have to save your world buffs for the next raid. Yay! So either remove them or add Chrono Boons from the very start. That's, uh, that's something Blizzard should do. And finally, from my perspective on what they should do on Classic Fresh, a faster timeline, a much faster timeline i think with these older versions of the game that a year and a half two years is plainly bloody ridiculous it's too long of a period of time people know the content they'll blast through the content just that simple now of course some people will complain about gear i have the mentality that people obsessing about having best in slot every single tier yeah I don't really have a high opinion, but obviously a lot of people care about gear. How do you solve that? Well, maybe increase gear drops, more loot drops, could work, could be a solution. But yeah, tweak the values. In general, this is what I'd say, tweak the values, tweak some things, make, make the whole thing go faster, because two years of classic, not the greatest idea. You just get so many long pauses, make it more interesting, make it faster, make it go more interesting. And that will improve the experience. Costine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications and stay tuned for more.